All right, we are joined by Malik Golard. Hi, Malik. Hello. How are you feeling? Doing good. How about yourself? I'm doing wonderful, and I want to thank you so much for taking time out to speak with me this morning. Uh, I know this is a sensitive subject for you, but I just want you, if you could, share a little of your story uh, with us this morning. Uh, sure. I'm uh, Malik Golar. I'm currently 20 years old from Decatur, Georgia. I went to Southwest Cap High School and graduated with the class of 2015. Um, my incident took place on the evening of June 6, roughly about 6 p.m. I was sitting in the car with one of my closest friends, and um, we we're just kind of sitting there, you know, chilling, talking, listening to music, or whatever. And then uh, next thing that I knew, I was, I guess, reportedly shot from what my neighbor told me. So I kind of mm. was sitting there and I, I blacked out. My body kind of like locked up. Mm -hmm. I could just hear like a real, real loud ringing noise. So by then, the neighbor had come outside and opened up the door and taken me out of my seatbelt and just kind of explained to me that I had been shot. And he was giving a description of the car that he seen speeding off. And he asked me, Dad, I know who it was. And my initial thoughts were, were no, just like off the description of the vehicle. And he asked me again and reassured. And I thought about it for a second. And then like, it just kind of dawned on me like who it could have possibly been. So I told him um, I knew the victim who was trying to get the name. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I kind of mumbled the name and he said it back and I just confirmed that was it. He was trying to get the last name. I wasn't able to give it to him. So my mother had come outside by then to, you know, under, to witness what, had, you know, what was going on or whatever. Mm -hmm. So he was describing to her who I, who I, the name I had uh, described and the car or whatnot. And she kind of was able to help with the last name. And he came back and confirmed again that that was the correct person. Mm -hmm. I told him yes. So um, by that time, I'm not sure how much time had passed, but the, you know, the ambulance, the paramedics, and everybody had arrived. So they put me on the stretcher or whatever and put me into the ambulance. As we ride in there, they just got the, the little medical light just, you know, that beams over you so they can see all the decisions, wounds, and, mm -hmm. and whatnot. So I was just looking at that light, and I was like, man, that, that light too bright. You know how I describe you when you're dying, you see a bright light. Right, like, right. Yeah, I'm not trying to go there. Exactly. So I was like, I'm going to sleep. So That's I it. To, <laughs> I went to sleep, then um, I just remember, I didn't like fully wake up. I just kind of like woke up a little bit because I'm very, I'm very proud for a person of like my hair. Like, especially being African-American, we know that our hair does not grow fast. Right, right. It's, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> So my hair had finally gotten like to the length and to you know the appropriate hairstyle that I wanted. Mm -hmm. So when I feel when I could feel that, that clipper going across my head and I'm shaving my head, I just kind of like woke up a little bit. And I opened my eyes, mm. I kind of look around like man, these people are shaving my head. Right. So I just kind of fall back asleep. And I guess by that time they had put me on the the um. I guess the next time I remember waking up, I was on the surgical table. Mm -hmm. and they just had that light again. But I knew I was hooked up to all these different machines. Like, I could feel, you know, mm -hmm. things in my mouth or whatnot. But I'm looking at the light, and I'm like, yo, it's not happening again. So I, I go back to sleep. But okay. I guess that was probably from help from IVs. And mm -hmm. So I just go back to sleep. After that, I just remember waking up in the hospital room and, you know, just being surrounded by friends and family. Mm -hmm. Everybody just kind of, you know, unless you, like, fully come to and mm -hmm. not just, like, in and out, it's more, you know, intensive. Like, oh, my God, are you okay? Or do you understand what happened? I'm just kind of right. like, yeah, I, I'm fully aware of what's going on. And from there, people just kind of, you know, want to reassure again that the suspect that I've, you know, given the description of this person has actually done it. It's just hard to believe, like, the person that did it. They were, it's almost like, I don't have any brothers. I have two younger sisters. So mm -hmm. to me, that was, like, one of my brothers. I only have, mm -hmm. I can literally, I have, like, five friends I can count on my hand. Right. And that was, like, you know what I'm saying? That was just somebody I, I pro pro projected as my brother. Right. So, um. Mm -hmm. So they were asking, I was just kind of confirming. At the same time, just trying to take it all back in in my head, like, wow, this person really did this to me. And then from there, people just asking questions, like, why do you think, you know, this happened or whatnot? Mm -hmm. So then, by then, I guess by that time, everybody kind of already had put their own pieces together. Mm -hmm. And they mm -hmm. were just kind of, like, using me to confirm. So um, once they had Brady for two weeks, now I was transported, transported from Grady to mm -hmm. Children's Healthcare of Atlanta, where I did uh, some of my rehab for another two weeks. Okay. So, um Okay, well, you look great, Malik. Uh, how how are you feeling? I mean, are there any restrictions right now on uh, your activities? Restrictions, no, but I think, like, overall, I'm basically 75% back to my, my normal self. Mm -hmm. Doctors, they said it would take up, like, to a year for full recovery. Okay. So, yeah, 75%, I'm back to my normal self. Well, you look great, and uh, I, I know uh, we can just thank God for your great health. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've been praying for you. We've been knowing your family for a while, um, I shouldn't say for a while, for years. I mean, your mom and I were in classmates at Tuskegee and I know the entire Tuskegee family has been praying for you and we're so glad that you're doing so well. 
So what does the, your future look like? Are there plans for you to go back to college uh, um, yes, anytime to, soon? I hope to attend um, SCAD in Atlanta okay. in the fall. They're, they start in September, so right now I just got to um, get my transcript from my previous college and have them send it over. Okay. And that would be the final uh, Wonderful. process to my That's great. That's great. So Malik, um, for, for the audience, the viewers that are watching this uh, recap, what do you hope that they will take away from this recap? What do you hope someone would gain? Just, it's kind of hard to say be, you know, be mindful of the people that you hang around because the person that done this to me, I had known them ever since my freshman year of high school. I'm mm. a wise and junior now, so that just, yes, yeah, that's, that's a lot of time mm -hmm. for you to get to know somebody and fully understand them. But um, besides that, I guess just believe in the power of prayer. Because mm -hmm. I know for a fact that I did a lot of prayer myself being in the hospital, and I had a lot of people praying for me. So if you don't take anything else, just know that the power of prayer is real and God is real. That's right. That's right. Well, I want to thank you for taking the time out to speak with me, Malik. And uh, I pray for your continued health. Um, and I know the rest of the family uh, is praying for your continued uh, strength as well. Take good care.